Good morning, wrestling fans, and welcome to PWR Today with your reigning, defending, and current PWR Draft leader. This is Matthew Thomas, joined this Wednesday morning with Linda Kay. Linda, how are you this fine day? I'm doing great. Happy hump day to you. Thank you very much. Uh, happy hump day to you as well. Um, it is May the 11th, so there's no like cute Star Wars reference or any like 11 reference that I can think of. So yeah, I guess uh, hump day will have to be what it uh, suffices as. And uh, on hump day or any day, what what attire would be a good uh, a good outfit for that? Um, that can be taken many different ways, mm-hmm. but I'm getting used to uh, these Wednesday mornings. But when I wake up, no matter what day it is, I'm wearing my comfortable, fashionable wrestling street fashions from collar and elbow. So if you want to wake up, feeling comfy like Linda Kay does every morning, make sure to go to collarandelbowbrand.com. Check out the latest and greatest in wrestling street fashions, the sales, and to save 10% off your order, use promo code Linda K. That's L-I-N-D-A-K-A-Y. So what you're telling me, and you know, it's been speculated before that you've kind of got an end with some new products are developing. You're telling me there's potentially collar and elbow pajamas on the horizon? <laughs> I mean, the shirts are so comfy that I do sleep in them. However, if there were some tailor-made, or not just like for, like, you know, any particular person, but any detailed pajamas, that that that's a great idea there, me, Matthew. I almost forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. It's like a hybrid, like meet Matthew or or Matt I don't know what the combination well what, when I what, text you guys I do it's either MH or MT so yeah. yeah you know what that's that's interesting because it's two two M's yeah we gotta maybe I mean since Matthew Thomas is my real name maybe it's time that he changes up his moniker a little bit because <laughs> because here's the here's the thing like you know, WWE, they don't like people having the same names. I think Meathead and Matthew's a little bit too close. So being that, that the man they call Meathead is a radio name, uh, we'll potentially have to work on that. So uh, if you'd like to, if you'd like to send an email suggestions uh, for what Meathead should change his name to, uh, the possibilities are, are limitless. I mean, he's had the moniker for quite a while. I think it might be time for a change, Linda. So email or, or how about uh, a comment or uh, something on one of our socials, unless you have yeah. an email to provide. Well, and then, you know, while I'm getting to the news here, you know, what we could do, Linda, you could actually, I'm sure you don't have it memorized, but you could pull up his actual telephone, his actual telephone <laughs> number. Oh my and just give, Yeah, just give that to the listening audience to shoot him a text or uh, give him a call. It kind of be like when they did that with Sami Zayn, except uh, more fun for us. Mm-hmm. Or if you want to, you know, go classic, actual pen and paper, you can seal it in an envelope, stamp. Throw it in the old mailbox. Yeah, I think he stopped. Uh, I think he stopped checking his mailbox after that anthrax thing. I don't yes. know if he checks his physical mail anymore. Right. So you might have to communicate it with him digitally or uh, or via via text message. But uh, we'd like to move on to some exciting. Well, not. I don't know if exciting is the right word, but very breaking big news this morning. Uh, it was reported by. Um, I guess we can we can disclose other news outlets. It was reported by uh, Meathead's uncle Dave Meltzer yesterday that it looks like Roman uh, will presumably be taking as much as up to 10 weeks off uh, through the summer months. Uh, He is not advertised apparently for any uh, Raw House shows or not Raw House shows because he's on SmackDown, but any WWE events uh, through the next three months. Now, it it was not determined whether this includes pay-per-views or not, but there had been some whispers, Linda. There had been some uh, clips that had surfaced here in the last few weeks at the end of house shows where Roman was kind of bidding the fans adieu for a while and a little bit of talk, a little bit of speculation, a lot of talk about Roman potentially doing some acting. And uh, yesterday we had probably the most credible, um, credible uh, bit of information drop that seems to kind of uh, potentially – go in the favor of this actually happening. Uh, Linda, your thoughts on Roman potentially taking some time off this summer and, and what that means to the state of the titles. Yeah, I did see one of the clips and definitely was out of God mode character. Um, so, t- sounding like he was speaking from the heart and just letting everybody know. I mean, it, it's, it's hard to speculate because I mean, we just automatically hope it's not for health reasons. I know mm-hmm. you and I talked offline about that, but 
um didn't you mention there was a, a rumor that maybe if it is for a movie maybe yeah. or a lot of talk about Roman and, and some uh, Hollywood stuff here recently. So I, it seemed more speculative. I didn't know that anything was uh, you know quite on the horizon this soon, but that seems to be where a lot of the talk is at. Yeah, I definitely can see that. He's definitely got the movie star looks on. Is this going to be a rebirth of the Marine nine or uh... it's, it's very possible. I've been lobbying for a third installment of see no evil for a while, but I tell you, you have got to keep him far away from the DC universe, especially he can't go anywhere around Aquaman. Oh, that or they can create something completely new and some, have some type of stare down where it's almost like a doppelganger kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, or perhaps um, oh, all these reboots, the reboots, Matthew, of No Holds Barred. Ooh, uh-huh. ooh. Yeah, I like that. I like that. You know, a holiday classic that I was always kind of fond of that I don't think it's got a very high Rotten Tomatoes score, but um, was it Santa Claus with Muscles? Did you ever see that? The Hulk Hogan film? <laughs> I I don't think that's what it was called. I think it was Santa with Muscles. Oh, I maybe. I well, have, to, have to research this, but I'm almost positive it was called Santa with Muscles. And the premise, I watched it one time, not as a child, Monty. I watched it one time as a full grown adult just to get the full uh, benefit from it. And I believe the premise was Hulk Hogan plays like a, a bodyguard or a biker or something that legitimately like gets amnesia and thinks he's Santa Claus. Like that premise alone, anybody, anybody who's never seen this movie, that premise alone, why it's not a holiday classic, why you don't have that as the lead into it's a wonderful life every year on your television <laughs> is beyond me. But, you know, the one time I saw it, I think it was a great piece of filmmaking. So you put Roman Reigns and Santa with muscles too, or Santa reboot. Yeah, I, or, I, I mean, I, he won't not be able to outdo the late great Roddy Roddy Piper, but uh, they live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sequel, you could, or, you could yeah. do that. You could do that. The possibilities are absolutely endless. And I think that, man, there, there would be a WWE. I, I don't know if like the actual WWE film division is still in existence or not, but I mean, that was pretty hot and cold, but I think if you had a resurgence of the WWE film division with nothing but reboots, reboots are huge now. I think you, I could, really, you could really be onto something. Yes. So what we're saying here uh, this lovely Wednesday morning is that Roman Reigns, we, we just kind of decided it right there. Uh, we're mm-hmm. going to go with uh, it most likely being for a movie role. I don't know, but it is, like you said, some Big news. I mean, he is on top of his game. Just having the titles unified in his honor yeah. um, ah, should be interesting. But, but you know, if he does just the pay-per-views in the summer, that's still something huge there as well. Um, but whatever it is, I, you know, hope all is well and yeah. good luck to him. And I got to say, it is a surprise to me because, I mean, it seemed like it was um, – you know, going back to the PWR draft, you know, he was your number one pick and it, w- it would have, here's the thing. It would have been my number one pick as well too. And I think uh, the same thing with the man they call meathead, because it seemed pretty solidified that the story they're trying to tell is to have him go another year, holding those titles to potentially, um, you know, main event WrestleMania once again, and still might be the thing, you know, we might just be talking about Roman off of TV, but I do want to add this. I It seems uh, fairly shocking that they would have the champion not defend it for that period of time. Yeah. But I think that you're seeing something very beneficial going on on the Raw brand for not having a title there. Um, you've actually had a lot of – I don't even want to say the mid-card because it's not just the mid-card, but a lot of these feuds, Cody and Seth, what they're doing with the Judgment Day – A lot of this stuff that's not involving the title getting sufficient time and feeling like a big deal where it would have, you know, been overshadowed by having a title on that brand. WWE is running with, you know, not having a major title on Raw for the first time in a long time, and I think it's helping the product. Um, Now, if you take it away from SmackDown for several months, do you get something similar to when it is defended that – That it's a huge deal. I don't know. I mean, I would hope they wouldn't hot shot it off of Roman. I mean, if you're going to hot shot it. I was going to say, like, or does he drop it? Yeah. The two belts. Does it it or them? They're two belts. 
Yeah, I, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you know, you know what, Linda? Though, you know, if that's the way they want to get those belts separated, that might be, that might be what happens. You know, because we really haven't talked much about that unification issue after WrestleMania. He's been carrying around both belts after WrestleMania, and Raw has been in no hurry to say, "Hey, we got to have a new champion now." So. What Mm -hmm. does ultimately happen with that? I think the end result is we don't know, and it should make for some intriguing television in these uh, upcoming weeks. Um, What was uh, intriguing television? Intriguing, good or bad? You know, intriguing is is up to the. uh, It's an objective. It's a uh, yeah. It's an objective term. So uh, NXT 2.0 last night. um, We did have a show that featured. It had the uh, women's division uh, up front in multiple matches, and it would start off with an NXT Women's Tag Team Championship match. Uh, Toxic Attraction, the team of Gigi Dolan and JC Jane going up against Roxanne Perez and Wendy Chu in the opening match. Toxic Attraction trying to get revenge after the uh, attempted murder last week from Wendy Chu. Um, this would see Toxic Attraction retain Gigi Dolan uh, with the pin on Roxana Perez, Roxanne Perez after Mandy Rose uh, interfered. I think this went the way that uh, most everybody thought it was going to go and hopefully kind of puts a little end to that feud and, um, you know, the, the manslaughter charges. Oh, um, I do think that, yes, uh, Toxic Attraction getting that win uh, was the right thing just because the week prior they had uh, the shenanigans uh, in place, if you will. But I don't think it's necessarily the end of the whole Wendy Chu to tox- toxic attraction feud. I think there's going to be a program there between Wendy and Mandy Rose. Interesting. At some point. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. <sighs> that might be the direction we're going. I mean, NXT NXT does have a very deep roster and you you get more people added on a weekly basis. Last night um was no exception. Last night we had a new member of the Diamond Mine, uh Damon Kemp. Uh, add it to the diamond mine. Not familiar with the guy. His accolades sound great, but uh, a new face on NXT and a new face in uh, the stable of the diamond mine last night. Yeah. I mean, after the release of Malkin Bivens and we were, un- we were unsure about the future of Roddy there on NXT, but it uh, looks like diamond mine is still going strong. And I uh, mean, and you said it, a lot of the, female superstars were showcased yeah. a lot and Ivy Nile being one of them. And I don't know if I'm jumping ahead too much here, but uh, showing her dominance, her strength, and it's looking like she's going to be the new leader. Yeah. 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 I could see, I couldn't tell though. Like the Ivy Nile challenge was last night and I could not tell if that was them trying to put her front and center in diamond mine, or if that was try- them trying to distance her from diamond mine. I really don't know. Um, but Linda, she was probably in, uh, three or four segments last night, and we actually at one point had to go it went went picture in picture uh, from a match to the Ivy Nile Challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giving her got... some some speaking roles too now. Before so I, at first, I don't think she really got to speak much or say much or got the mic really. I don't think ever. But we're getting yeah. to hear her talk more and uh, with these challenges. It's interesting. I I, I think this is what's nice about nxt i mean maybe some people don't like it i personally do it's something a little different that they just do a lot of these yeah. like vin- not just backstage vignettes but like storylines where it's almost like a right. entirely another sitcom going yeah. on yeah <laughs> yeah it's 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 a different presentation from of course mm-hmm. the original nxt is a different presentation uh from the other two products that wwe is offering uh, I believe the original NXT was a different presentation, but it was more of a different presentation, like on an independent wrestling level. Whereas this, it is more of a, yeah, it, it's it's like turning that dial, but it's turning it more towards the entertainment side in certain pockets on uh, yeah. on NXT 2.0. Uh, somebody that's been turned up recently is Joe Gacy. Uh, we did not see the conclusion last week. They went off air prior to we saw before we saw what happened with Braun Breaker. But uh, as we thought, because it's pretty much par for the course with NXT, he was kidnapped and uh, he was, I think, uh, he was more or less bound and gagged and left by the side of the road. <laughs> yeah, he was, <laughs> a lot of times, yeah, I, their heads get covered. And um, but hey, I I did. Joeying the the storylines that things are stretching, you know, beyond what I thought it would be for some of the feuds, but that's okay. This is a way to keep it going in a different way. It's keeping things interesting, and uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> sorry, it's just a kidnapping thing. <laughs> oh, sorry. So yeah, the uh, <laughs> the um, people that I've been calling Joe Gacy's druids the last couple of weeks, he apparently. I don't know if this is the official name or not, but introduce them as the faces of change. I was expecting a reveal, but I guess we uh, are not going to get the reveal right now. But he did invite Braun to join uh, his group. So apparently they're going to try to keep the uh, suspense going with exactly who the faces of change are. Uh, going to try to keep that going for a couple more weeks. Yeah, kind of. I mean, obviously not the same as the Judgment Day, but shades of it, I feel, uh, down there in NXT. Absolutely. So uh, going back to women's action, last night was the launch of the women's breakout tournament, and the first match up would be uh, Sloane Jacobs going up against Fallon Henley. Uh, Fallon Henley with the victory against uh, 19-year-old Sloane Jacobs. Uh, We would immediately go into uh, more women's action with Amari Miller going up against uh, a returning NXT competitor going by the name of Alba Fire. Alba Fire picking up uh, the victory. Uh, Linda, your thoughts on those two women's matches? Yeah, uh, great matches and great to highlight uh, the breakout women's tournament. Um, I, I have a question, though. So some of the women in the tournament, like Fallon Henley, and later we saw Nikita Lyons. With the men's breakout tournament, were there talents, I can't recall, talents on there that already had like their debut. I, 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 I don't think so. I don't think so. That was the main differential yeah. in this. Right. From what I remember, yeah. the men's breakout tournament were people that were not established because that was when, uh, that was when Duke Hudson, you know, because remember they lined them up yep, and everybody introduced themselves. Duke Hudson, Odyssey Jones, I believe. Yep. Um, you know, and that was the, you know, cause, because I remember the show, the recap that we did, we were going through and I was a big Duke Hudson fan. Because uh, I saw him, you know, immediately, and I said that guy's winning the tournament. He did, and I think he lost in the first round. Uh, but yeah, that was our first introduction. Now, these are, for the most part, uh, established talent, which is, uh, I, I think, part of that though is there is a lot of people on that roster. So if you start bringing in additional people, you know, the concern is, um, you know, you'd have potentially too many people lost in the shuffle hanging in the NXT uh, kitchenette area oh, that we yes. see prom- <laughs> prominently <laughs> featured. Well, I, I just uh-huh. sorry. I was just I, I just bring it up because it just seems like it's you're kind of having I don't want to say predictable, but you know you just kind of have your mindset like I think she's gonna win. I think she's gonna win. Um, but that's all right. It's still a way to really yeah. highlight showcase because I mean even Valen, Nikita, and some other ladies that you know are in the tournament that have had their debuts have had a couple of matches in NXT. I mean they're still up and coming rising stars as well. So you can look at it that way as well. Yeah, it's but you're right. It's easier to pick when you look at the brackets. It's easier to pick who is going, who the tournament's for, and who uh, is going to uh, you know advance round to round. Um, I'll tell you who this show is for right now is Solo Sequoia. Uh, he came out to cut a promo, basically challenging Grimes for a title match. Uh, Cameron Grimes coming out to a chorus of boos, of course, because the NXT universe absolutely despises Cameron Grimes and everything he stands for now. Uh, he agreed to give Solo a title shot if he can get past Carmelo Hayes. Uh, we would have uh, a beatdown ensue. Solo Sokoa came, a, took a little while to come to the rescue, but he eventually, uh, you know, comes to the rescue and is standing tall, uh, you know, with Grimes. So I can certainly see the direction this is going, but. I I honest, honestly wonder if Sokoa is too big for that title now. I think sooner rather than later, based on the reaction he's getting, they need to pull the trigger and have him and Breaker because that is the guy the NXT universe uh-huh. wants. That place becomes absolutely – and not saying that, that Breaker's losing any of his momentum. It's just kind of hard to tell when he's you know kidnapped and you know taken hostage and whatnot, and we don't see him. Uh, my goodness, I think the NXT universe really, really wants them some solo Sequoia right now. Absolutely. And one thing that I was thinking about as Cameron Grimes was coming out to the you know, slew of booze is I, I boo, like cheering booze, not booze as in like whiskey or uh, moonshine <laughs> booze. Boo, but does he need to start drinking? I think they need to start slowly turning him back to the old Cameron yeah. Grimes where yeah. he. His hair's longer, the beard. Uh, he's showing more of the, the chest hairs. And uh, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, the southern twang is coming a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, and make him, you know, have, have him be heel again. Absolutely. You know, maybe this is how the crowd's going to treat him. 
Yeah, and here's the, and here's the thing too. When you get the reaction that you're not going for in a place that small, it's pretty much overwhelming. You yeah. know, like in a regular arena, you can kind of hide it a little bit. And you know, in a regular arena, it's it's not necessarily going to, I think, take over as much. But that NXT crowd seems like a pretty tight knit group. And even if they're not, even if it's different people there every week, you know, it's it's going to take a vocal majority, I think. To kind of to kind of you know convince the rest of the crowd what to do. Um, so yeah, I, I think that the reaction and kind of listening to the crowd in a venue that small is probably uh, probably the way to do it because they and it's 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 probably just because you know they feel like that you know Grimes with the title means uh, Solo doesn't have it. But my goodness, it's been very interesting to watch this uh, you know to watch this take place. Um, we would also get a mixed tag match last night. Grayson Waller and Tiffany Stratton going up against Andre Chase and Saray. Uh, we had a little bit of a magical wardrobe change when Andre <laughs> Chase and Brody uh, walked through the curtain. So they changed like Saray. Um, this match would end with Saray getting the pinfall on Tiffany Stratton after there was air horn interference once again by a pig tailed Brody. Yeah. How about that chase you there? Uh, <laughs> I was just thinking before we started talking about this match, uh, if we want the majority of the crowd to sway one way, we can have chase you chant a bit more for, for Grimes or for whoever. Oh, yeah. Like, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. In, in big news, too, last night, chase you now with the foreign language department. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that that is true. We had Soray and uh, Brody back understanding the Japanese. Uh lingo there and knowing that she wanted that mixed tag match so all in all i truly enjoyed this match the shenanigans but it was fun there there's a lot of action a lot of change up and uh wardrobe changes not i was gonna say malfunction but I, I, maybe uh it's but possible he wasn't expecting it so i guess it does count as a malfunction uh, but yeah but Saray getting that win so that was great to see and linda uh, maybe that's how we get cameron grimes Cameron Grimes' heel is he like frauds some Chase U students out of like credit hours or something? <laughs> no, he or he sells them bonus like meal passes or something. Oh, or like the card like in the dorm to get your your meals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the in the hall, the dining yeah, hall. Yeah, yeah. So like they just the Cameron the uh, Chase U students just are hungry all the time and they start turning on. Uh, Andre Chase because they're not getting sufficiently fed and it's all because Cameron Grimes is frauding them out of their their meal pass. I think we're I think we're on to something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our uh, second match in the women's breakout tournament would be Nikita Lyons going up against Ariana Grace. Uh, Ariana Grace dominated most of this match, but it was Nikita Lyons ultimately with the victory here uh, earlier when you referenced some of these matches being a little bit predictable. I imagine this is probably one you were talking about. Uh, yeah, but but to my uh, my not dismay to my uh, surprise, surprise uh, you know, that uh, that uh, Grace was able to you know really hold her own and do her thing. I'm feeling yeah. I think that was the most we saw Nikita down. Or I mean, she's had you know her matches like Lash Legends and what and Legend excuse me and whatnot. But um, with it being a, a breakout star, you know, match that that was interesting to see. Very surprising, but Nikita Lyons coming out strong in the end. And I love her moves because you know as a MMA or you know boxing or kickboxing practitioner as well. I see what she's doing and I like it. And it's good to see a different style uh, in ring. And uh, the night would open and end with women's matches. This being Natalia going up against Cora Jade. This has been a story they've been telling in the last several weeks, and I think a very good story, a very easy to grasp story. Um, you know, Cora Jade, who has looked up to Natalia ever since she was a kid. Getting to go one on one with her hero, I think, in what was an absolute excellent match. Um, the finish was basically a sequence where Cora Jade got Natalia in the sharpshooter. Natalia was able to escape. Natalia getting Cora Jade in the sharpshooter. Cora reaching the ropes. Natalia pulling her back. Cora reaching the ropes. Natalia pulling her back. The finish would see Cora Jade not tap, but actually pass out uh, from the sharpshooter. A little less blood than it was with Stone Cold and her Uncle yeah. Brett, but never, nevertheless, a very, very good match and a great finish here, I think, to continue telling that story. Yeah, absolutely. Great way to finish off NXT last night. Uh, great to see Cora Jade getting this huge moment with her idol and 
you know, obviously Maddie returning that favor for her and just, it was great to see. And also the whole point with like the, the sharpshooter, I was just like, wow. And, you know, I was thinking like, Cora Jade's got those long legs, able to put that in on Natty, and yeah. wow, like that was just cool because you don't really see that often happen to Natty, let alone at, at NXT to for you know I'm just Cora, but like just you know just an, she's been uh, she's, she's more than up and cover now, but yeah. you know a, somebody uh, not quite as a uh, uh, veteran status as Natty. Well, in, in what really stood out to me last night, and Cora I think is 20 or 21. Mm-hmm. When you went and you heard the rundown of the ages in the women's breakout tournament, and then you also had the uh, earlier match with, um, I believe, Sloane Jacobs, who is 19, the quantity of young female talent in NXT right now is absolutely uh, jaw-dropping. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, obviously, being down there at the Performance Center there and the recruiting, but it's definitely it's interesting to hear because – you know, we have our, our our pal here in Milwaukee, Cal Hero, uh, being young, yes. 19-year-old doing his thing. And he was, like, the only 19-year-old right now that I knew of, like, that was yeah. you know, out regularly on TV doing his thing in these uh, major promotions that we see on a regular basis on, on our TV sets. TV sets? Who has a TV set? Our flat- yes, everybody has a TV set. <laughs> You know what? It's time to bring back TV sets. I think there needs to be a resurgence in like floor model TVs. Speaking of someone who's not young anymore, a TV set. Um, Yeah. So, (laughs) but uh, great, great to just, I mean, it's just amazing to hear that. I mean, that's wonderful. I mean, I watched wrestling my whole life as well. I didn't jump into the ring at age 19, but I sure wish I did. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's great to, it's great to see. And uh, something else that's going to be, well, you probably won't be able to see us tomorrow, but you'll be able to listen to us tomorrow. Myself and the man they call meathead for right now, until we decide what he's going to change that to joining you tomorrow morning to break, to break down the night that was AEW dynamite Uh, for Linda K. This is Matthew Thomas until next time.